Hey, thanks for watching Gnome School News, and today we're getting into the Super Conference. I'm talking about Big Ten, talking about the SEC, talking about the future of expansion, all that kind of shit. The truth of it, all right, because there's all kinds, still today, <laughs> in the mainstream media, in the mainstream sports media anyway, uh, it's very, still very popular to talk about, you know, all the teams the SEC and the Big Ten can add. You know, and again, someone in my comments is talking about a 25-team SEC and a 25-team uh, Big Ten. That shit's never going to happen. They're no, never going above 20 teams. There's two words that, throughout all this realignment talk that have been bandied about forever. Everyone's heard it. Additive and dilutive all right it's it's so simple <laughs> and to me there's three teams that are no doubt additive right now that could in the future go to one of those two conferences and that is notre dame florida state and clemson now there's a second tier to that that could possibly end up somewhere that may be additive enough maybe to break even whatever you know, Miami, from what we've heard, Oregon and Washington are both dilutive to the Big Ten. So if they're dilutive to the Big Ten, then it's very easy to just look across the country and see UNC as dilutive, also Virginia as dilutive. So if you think about it, just to get to 20 teams, you got to find eight teams that are additive for the Big Ten and the SEC. And I don't... You know there there are there there are not eight teams all right much less going to 25 now you're talking 18 teams that are additive no there's not you may be able to squint and find four right now that might fit the criteria now there could be other criteria there's other ways for teams to get there as i said oregon and washington wanting to take less money to get into the big 10 that may work however eventually they will become full-fledged members getting a full share and will that be additive at that time or will that be dilutive that could be a gamble on the big tens part that may be why there's no movement towards that yet and for unc and virginia you know their basketball brands speak for themselves even though unc sucks this year <laughs> they didn't even make the tournament but they turned down uh nit bid you know Wow, how arrogant is that shit? But anyway, those two brands, they don't have the brand in football. All right, and I know it. I keep talking about football when it comes to realignment, but that's what's mostly driving the realignment. It's consolidation of the biggest football brands in the two conferences because football makes a shit ton of money, and that's what most of those two conferences base their TV deals on is their football brands. The better brands, the better markets, the better matchups, the better rivalries, that's what's driving it. And as I speak right now, really only the Big 12 really has a chance to go beyond 20. All right, and I think pretty easily, just depending on what happens with the ACC by 2036 or before. But because they, because what would be additive to the Big 12, there's a lot more teams out there, just a ton more teams and schools that would be value additive to the Big 12 than there would be for the Big 10 and the SEC because of that money gap. So this is not hard math to figure out. So if anyone's talking, oh, the Big 10 is going to get to 25, 30 teams, they're insane because there's no way that those presidents are going to allow a team that is dilutive and take money out of their pocket. Not happening. But there was something interesting said on 365 Sports several days ago. I cannot recall the man's name or where he's from, but I know he used to be some kind of CEO executive of a giant media company and all this kind of crap. Um, he was talking about a mega conference, a football-only mega conference where you get the top 32 teams in the country all together, regardless of conference, put them in one league and have them play each other. So you're pulling teams out of all the conferences, mostly out of the Big Ten and the SEC, but, you know, maybe a couple out of the ACC, maybe one or two out of the Pac-12, maybe, you know, maybe a couple out of the Big 12, and that would form your giant mega conference. 
football only. Well, this individual seems to really believe that that is the future. That is where we're going. That's what's going to make all the money. Uh, the problem is the SEC and the Big Ten have spent so much money building their brands. Those schools love where they are. I don't see them just saying, you know what? A handful of teams out of each conference tells the rest of the teams to kick rocks. They're going to go over here and form this super uh, football league, and that's going to be it. Because at that point, what are you creating? You're creating an uneven revenue stream for those schools. And, okay, so who's getting left out of that? Uh, Mississippi, Mississippi State, Mizzou, Arkansas, and the SEC, Minnesota, and the Big Ten, you know, maybe Wisconsin. You know, does Utah get left out of that? You know, Colorado most definitely would. Big 12, you're talking the vast majority of the Big 12 getting left out. And what about the ACC? Would UNC get an invite to that 32-team conference? No. Virginia? No. Miami would definitely be in just because of the brand. That won't happen because, let's say, okay, let's say it did happen. Okay, let's say that did happen. So you take those top brands, top level, you know, blue chip brands out of the SEC and the Big Ten and a few other spots, coalesce, come together to make a 32-team football-only league in college. Well, that's going to absorb a ton of money out of the market. All right, so, you know, if you're Vanderbilt or Purdue or Texas Tech, or Colorado, or Arizona, all of a sudden you're not going to get the same share out of those whatever conference that you're in. All right, so Vanderbilt is right now they're getting paid what Alabama's getting paid. But if you do that, right, you have that <laughs> 32 team mega conference. Well, those schools are going to be making the most money out of the SEC or the Big Ten. All right, so if you're Minnesota and you get left out of that 32-team league, why would you stay in the Big Ten at that point? Because you're not making what those schools are. You don't even get to play those schools anymore. You're having to play the also-rans. That's what you're having to do. So why stay in that conference? Your basketball, baseball, everything else still is going to be played like normal, but the football aspect of it, you're screwed on. Because you're not going to be making the same share as Ohio State if you're Minnesota and you get left out. And see, that's the problem with that model because there's no incentive for those uh, rest of those teams to even stay in the conference. So if you have a conference, let's say like the Big 12, and they've expanded and added Colorado and Arizona and Arizona State and Utah, and let's say they lose Utah into that model, maybe one or two other teams into that model, what would keep Minnesota from just saying, screw you, we're going to the Big 12? Because at that point, we could be making more money or about the same money, and we're actually going to get into a league where it's actually competitive and fun, and people are going to see us, you know, you know, just sitting around playing, if you're Minnesota, Northwestern or Purdue or Rutgers or Maryland all the time, kind of sucks for you. You know, the same thing with Mississippi State and Old Miss. I mean, or, or Mizzou. Why, why would you stay? Why would you stay? Just to make less money and to watch your peers go off into the Super League that you can't get into? Your The doors are shut to you? That's what doesn't make any sense. That's why this isn't going to work at all. Because, number one, how a grant of rights wouldn't even matter at that point. So teams can freely move wherever they want except for those 32. And that's what this guy's not thinking about. It's not like these other smaller schools don't have any stroke, especially collectively. If, if only 32 teams go and do this thing, well, okay, fine. Well, there goes any grant of rights. The rest of those leagues can just coalesce, leave them, freeze out the other schools. Like, no, 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 we're not going to play you in basketball or football. Or, or, you know, we can't play you in football. We're not playing you in anything. I mean, they get, you can... What would stop them from doing that? And what would stop, you know, Mississippi State and Ole Miss and Arkansas 
or Mizzou getting together with, you know, Baylor, Houston, BYU, Colorado, Minnesota. You could keep tacking on the list of names of schools that'd be left out, which would be everybody else, and have everybody else coalesce into some kind of collective and freeze out the 32. Because the guy's not thinking that, okay, 32, that sounds cool, but that's not enough content for all the providers. It's not enough content for ESPN or Fox. It may be enough for CBS, but it's not going to be enough for NBC and Peacock. And by that point, you, you would think Amazon would get a foothold in college football. Maybe Apple TV does. So all the other content would have to go to all the also-rans. So it's not like they can absorb all the money out of the market with that 32-team model. There'd have to be money to pay these other schools to play, or it's not going to work. And you would see the absolute dissolution of all these conferences. And I just don't, I don't see that. I don't, I don't see that ever happening because I think there are, even though a lot of people are willing to give up traditions for money, some traditions for money, there's some traditions that, I mean, just look at this war that's been going on with the Big 12 and the Pac-12. And that's the Big 12 and the Pac-12. All right. You're talking about incredibly passionate people that love their conference. Now, talk about the SEC and the Big Ten. You think those two, you think those fan bases want to just dissolve their conferences and form into one 32-team mega something? No, they don't. Because we already have a 32-team mega league in this country, and it's called the NFL. All right? This is you want something different in college. People that is important to people. How that that's what college provides. It's something a little different. Yeah, regionality for the most part is going away, but not fully. The SEC is going to be regional. It's not going coast to coast. The Big Ten's going coast to coast. The Big 12's going to go coast to coast. But the SEC's not. So that's one of the things you give up you know, with this new realignment. But a 32-team mega conference in college football, it essentially just turns college football into a minor league. And we know it is a minor league. Open up a history book, and what you'll realize is there was once upon a time in this country, college football was the big leagues. It wasn't the NFL. The NFL was an afterthought. It's kind of like, you know, women's basketball. Like women's basketball, the big deal in this country in women's basketball is collegiate women's basketball. The WNBA is an afterthought. And it's the same thing way back when. Now, we know that it has turned. The NFL is the big deal. But college football is still massive. It's still massively popular. So there are some old traditions you're going to have to just hold on to. Things can change. That's fine. The way these conferences look can change. But when it comes to the Big Ten and the SEC, trust me, they value their autonomy. They're going to want to stay what they are. They're willing to add teams to that. A few that are additive, as I said. But what they don't want to do is destroy their conference just to get to form some mega thing. So I don't believe that at all. Now, there are some interesting lawsuits going on right now, uh, meaning... That if those certain lawsuits are won, then uh, student athletes would then become employees of the college they play for. And people seem to think that that can lead to one big conglomerate mega conference kind of deal like, we, like I'm talking about. I don't see that either. First of all, you got to win the lawsuit. Already they have NIL, but they're talking about direct payments from the institutions themselves. And really, nothing is to stop uh, these conferences from doing it kind of like what the WWF and other uh, wrestling brands did back in the day, which was a wrestler wasn't a direct employee of the WWF back then, now the WWE. That was a contracted employee, which means they got a contract for a certain period of time to appear in WWF events, but they weren't a direct employee. Now, this gets way off in the weeds, but uh, there's, like I said, there's many different levels of employment. Trust me. They, they, <laughs> I've done them all, man. I've been 
working directly for a business. I've been working for a company that contracts for that business where you're not, you might wear their uniform, but you're not actually an employee of that particular business. What you are is a contractor. And there's times where you're a subcontractor. So like that's pretty much what I was, was a subcontractor. I worked for a contractor that, that did the work for the original company. So really, I don't care what the outcome of any lawsuit is. All it means is, oh, you're changing the rules of the game a little bit. Well, we can adapt to that. And there's many, there's a plethora of ways that these conferences and these schools can adapt to it. So even if they're like, okay, they have to be employees. Well, they don't have to be direct employees of any school or conference. You can do them up as contractors. But keep in mind, if you do that, if you do that, well, there goes your portal for a lot of these guys. All right, so it's like they can do it two ways. E even with that lawsuit, I don't give a shit. They can say, look, we, here's a contract. You're a contractor. But you, now you are contracted to be here three years, at least three years, possibly a fourth year. Or they can do it like, okay, maybe a year contract. We'll see how you do, two years. Trust me, there's a lot of ways that these guys can get screwed on a deal like that. Because remember, this is temporary. You're talking three to four years, depending on injury. So right now, everything works in these kids' favor. If they want to transfer, they could transfer. They get paid, they get paid. But as far as being an actual employee of a college, that's where you can get screwed, my friend. No, I, I don't believe that will ultimately land into some kind of mega conference, some soul-crushing <laughs> uh, college football destroying mega conference. No, that's not going to lead to it either because there's too many ways around. There's too many loopholes, too many ways you can fit these guys in to where they're kind of employees, but they're really kind of not. And like I said, do you really want to lose the ability to transfer wherever the hell you want if you don't like your situation? Because if you become a contractor, that's what happens. And good luck getting out of the contract. Then whatever the school paid you, if you get out of the contract, now you got to pay the school back. Yeah, it gets... Ask the NFL guys. That shit gets a little more confusing when you become a contractor. So overall, the truth about the super conferences, the mega conference, and all that shit, the mega conference ain't happening. All right, you can hang that in your ass. The SEC and the Big Ten, they, they don't want to do it. Even those huge blue blood schools, do they really want to do that? I don't think so. I don't think they want to play each other every game. I don't think Nick Saban wants to play Georgia, then Oklahoma, then Texas, then Ohio State, then Michigan, then USC, then FSU, and then Clemson. I don't think he wants that schedule. <laughs> I don't think any of them want that schedule. If you hear these college coaches bitching every freaking every freaking year when their schedules come out, trust me, they don't want any part of a 32-team mega conference. So like I said, the absolute truth of it is SEC and Big Ten, they're not going to come together, coalesce in some kind of mega conference. They're not going to add more than 20 schools because there's not that many schools left that are additive to those two conferences and what the money they make. And all the people talking that shit, to me, they're just another Alex Jones talking about gay frogs. That's, that's what it looks like to me. Anyway, that's all I got on this. I'll be back with some other bullcrap later. Bye.